everybody. Scooter Hinden here with my good buddy, Brendan Stubblefield from Texas Brewing Inc., a homebrew shop here in Fort Worth. We're here with another episode of Texas Brew School. Today we'll be talking about yeast. So yeast in particular does a few things. Now first off, I'd like, before I explain those things, I'd like to explain, we got a bottle of summertime wheat here uh, from Rar and Sons. And what you'll notice is there wasn't really any snap when we opened that. Our good buddy Fritz Rar, the uh, owner and proprietor of Rar Brewing Company, gave us a bottle of this straight off the line. So not to, it's a little bit flat, but is uh, basically what, Hefeweizen, right? Yes, sir. Uh, and so that'll be, we'll talk about that in just a second, about how Hefeweizen will sort of show you uh, what yeast can actually impart to beer. Uh, but in particular, there, you know, we've talked about before, there are four main ingredients in beer, uh, malted barley, water, hops, and yeast. So like I said, we're talking about yeast today, and yeast does, what would you say yeast does? Well, it's very simple. Uh, uh, you know, when we, when we talk about uh, the different adjuncts and malt, malt and barley and all of that good stuff, it, we're basically extracting sugar from, from the grains. Mm -hmm. And uh, without our wonderful little creature called yeast, we wouldn't have beer or any fermentable, uh, uh, you know, wine or beer or anything right. for that matter. Uh, what that does is it, it basically, uh, the simplest way I can say is it goes in and it eats all the sugar, pees, pees alcohol, and farts CO2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that's, you know, that's one of the things is, you know, we like every episode, it seems like we say, well, this is the most important element in beer, and this is the most important element in beer. But really, beer would not be beer without yeast because it wouldn't turn into alcohol. So you basically know, have sugar water. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You'd have sugar water, and it would, you know, you'd have really, really terrible Kool-Aid. So what you can illustrate here is actually, uh, you know, actual kinds of yeast that you would use. You had, a, you know, sort of some homebrewers yeast, and then some right. yeast would actually would it look like. You know, you can't really tell as far as like with malt and hops. You can kind of hold it and look at it in your hand, but yeast is a living being. It kind of has to be sealed up. Right. So. And this one of the, these are the things that I brought from our store, and just to kind of illustrate what what's available to home brewers, but at the same time, this is the same way that a lot of big breweries actually use as well. Sure. Uh, the two main players in the market are uh, Y yeast, which comes in your uh, smack packs. Uh, you actually uh, smack the pack, and, mm -hmm. it, and it, it has some yeast nutrient in there, and it starts the, the fermentation process right away, mm -hmm. so you know how viable the yeast is, right. but how the, the package is produced, or, or it's swollen, swell, it tells you how viable the yeast is. Uh, also. We have uh, White Labs, that's the other main player in, in yeast. Uh, these are both, this one doesn't have an activator, you just pour directly in. Uh, but that one, uh, it, it's, uh, this is probably one of the main players in, in, in right. professional brewing as well, yeah, as sure. well as home brewing. Right. Um, and like I said, these are both live cultures. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and there's living li things inside li they're liquid yeah uh, well that's what <laughs> I say that but these are uh, and then you also can get a yeast that's dry and, and they're just dormant and they've come up mm. with a way of basically put it in a, a state of rest where uh, you know it basically it, it, it has a lot longer shelf life sure. if you're able to keep this for a lot longer period whereas this has about a six month or six month span these typically last up to over a year. So uh, those are some of the advantages and disadvantages right. of, uh, of your dry versus your liquid yeast. And you'll see with breweries, they'll kind of use, just some of them might use a dry yeast and some of them will use, uh, obviously on a larger scale. Almost I mean, this is, this this is, is more like something for a five, brow, five gallon batch, basically. Yes, exactly. Anyway, but yeast, uh, yeast is sort of divided into two categories. You got lager yeast and ale yeast. And you know, lager yeast being a, a bottom fermenting yeast, and ale yeast being a top fermenting yeast. Yes, exactly. So some of the difference we have, we'll talk a little bit about lagers. Yeah. Well, lagers uh, typically you'll get a lot of lagers. For example, Germans love lagers. Um, it, it's really a clean fermenting yeast. It mm -hmm. does have a lot of sulfur. Right. Uh, a little when you smell a lager when it's fermenting, it actually has kind of a rotten egg smell. That really is terrible. <laughs> uh, but uh, a lot of that goes away with time. Uh, Loggers are a lot, they take a lot longer to ferment. They're mm. a lot more, they cost breweries a lot more to produce a lager. Right. Uh, but overall it imparts a really clean character. There's not, doesn't add a whole lot to the, to the flavor of a beer. So ales will get you kind of a, 
you know, not not always, but you know, it's a little bit more of a robust fruit. You know, sometimes right. some fruity exactly. characters like a lager is very clean. What you're used to with you know, a lot of people are used to Bud Miller and Coors beers. Those are lagers. Exactly. You know, they don't necessarily ferment them the full time, but they're not really traditional styles. But that's a whole right. other conversation. Um, you know, but. Uh, you know, there's still a lot of really flavorful lagers as well. A lot right. of German beers are lagers. One of the other differences between the two, too, is uh, uh, lagers like to be fermented at cold temperatures, whereas your ales are fermented at a little warmer temperatures. Um, and then, like you said, you have a top cropping versus a bottom fermenting yeast. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, ales, is, uh, or, or this one particularly, uh, you know, Hefeweizens are, are typically ales, right? Yeah, it's, a, yes. it's an ale. Yeah. Um, so this is an ale, you know, they don't, actually Rod doesn't call it a Hefeweizen, but it really is, right? Right. Yeah. Well, a Hefeweizen is, is, is probably the, the, the best beer to actually demonstrate yeast and what all of it does because this, the, that's what this whole beer is built around is, is the yeast character. It produces a lot of phenols and uh, lots of different flavor compounds. Uh, you should get a lot of banana. Bubble gum, clove, clove, a little bit of uh, uh, lots of different little you know nuances, nuances in the yeah. beer that you can you can smell, you can sure. taste. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the times too, even uh, when you get a Hefeweizen in in a, in, a, in a bottle, a lot of times I like to swirl it up and get mm -hmm. the yeast in into solution sure. because uh, most of your Hefeweizens you'll have a little small layer sure. in, of in, in the beer and. Uh, uh, when, to me, it tastes a little dry. It sure. adds a lot more extra flavor yeah. to the beer when you, you and and that's basically what Hefe Weizen right. means in, in German is uh, uh, basically uh, yeast wheat. Right, <laughs> and that you know that that'll show you, sort of show you the difference if you have you know sort of a I know it's it's going out of uh, they're they're not putting it in production anymore, but St. Arnold has a uh, their that Texas wheat which is a crystal bison, right. uh, which is a filtered so you know it's not really yeasty like a like something like a uh, Hefeweizen would be that'll really show you the difference. If you have just sort of a standard wheat beer and a Hefeweizen, is right. you know both of them are made with wheat, right. but you know one of them uses that Hefeweizen yeast, so it's a little bit different. And you know um, that's one of the things that we uh, you know, we've seen lately with I uh, just mentioned mentioned uh, St. Arnold is they have their um, uh, movable yeast series right to sort of highlight they you know they they basically took one of their regular beers and uh, pitched it with. A different yeast than they normally use, and so and that's what the very first one they did was the weed whacker, mm -hmm. which they did their fancy lawnmower, but they pitched it with the weed whack uh, with a Belgian hefeweizen yeast instead, right. and it made the weed whacker. And it's actually going into full production, and right. that's replacing Texas wheat. So, um, you know, you're actually, you know, we're actually getting sort of it. It actually didn't turn out like a hefeweizen. It actually, kind of was more of like well, a Belgian wit. Actually, right, right, right. Yeah, it's a uh, the original, and uh, that's. The original, uh, uh, the lawnmower beer is actually a, a Kolsch, right? Which is a, a, a hybrid between a lager sure. and, a, and an ale. Mm -hmm. It's actually an, a, an ale yeast fermented at lager temperatures. Right. So you can go into a whole other gamut of different yeast there. <laughs> as far as Hefeweizens that are in Texas, I mean, you have obviously we have here the summertime wheat from Rar and Sons. Uh, uh, Live Oak makes a really great Hefeweizen, uh, and Franconia also makes one as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some other beers that that will sort of highlight what flavors yeast will bring to beer are Belgian beers. And in particular in Texas, uh, you know, we have, we really don't have that many. There's a lot of brew pubs and sort of one-offs and things like that they make. As far as stuff that you can actually find, Real Ale makes Devil's Backbone, which mm -hmm. is a Belgian triple, mm -hmm. and uh, La Bestia, which is a fairly new beer from Ranger Creek Brewery in San Antonio, mm -hmm. is a, like a Belgian uh, dark strong ale, which is right. fantastic. Um, and I do know uh, RAR is actually coming out with a uh, Belgian farmhouse ale. Oh, that's called right. Called Lagrange. Lagrange, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. So that will yeah. be coming out soon, too. Yeah, that'll be out probably sometime this summer, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Summer yeah. or late fall, or early spring. I think. Very cool, early, good. Late, late fall, excuse me. Got you, late fall. Okay, <laughs> cool. Well, it's coming out sometime this year, so. Anyways, right. <laughs> well, cool. Well, that about wraps us up for yeast. Um, scooter at TexasBrews.org. I'm Brendan Stubblefield with Texas Brewing Incorporated. Cool. Go to his website, texasbrewinginc.com, and go by and visit his homebrew store. Signing off and cheers, guys.